Hello, welcome to this week's edition of WCS Sports Connection. I'm your co-host, Jimmy Qualls, and with me as always is co-host Tate Matthews. Tate, we just completed week two. It was one of the most uh, interesting weeks in football that I can ever remember. Uh, I mean, we went from Friday night to Saturday. I mean, we had extra football played. We even had a draw thrown in there. We'll get to all that in just a moment, but let's talk about Friday night. Big games across the board, battle of the woods, unbelievable crowd. We get to halftime. The rain comes down, lightning goes. We have to postpone the game to Saturday, which uh, all the rest of our games as well were postponed, with the exception of the Page game. But Brentwood, Ravenwood, they came back out on Saturday, and the score was 10 to 10 at halftime tape, and it looked like uh, it was going to be a tight game all the way to finish, but it didn't finish that way. Yeah, it, and that it was it was really close in the first half, and that's what uh, I was glad you said is not only does it get suspended, but it's a 10 10 tie. But I thought. From the first half, uh, I thought that Ra uh, Ravenwood, their, their scoring drive and, and their big plays, they came on uh, when it looked like the, the pocket had broke down and Morrow was out scrambling and making something happen, which is, is a heck of a weapon with him. That goes to show what a good player he is. But it just seemed like they, they never really sustained anything in the first half, I didn't think. Again, scored and they had 10 points, but, it, but, but their scoring drive was more on when he moved out of the pocket bought himself some time, found a guy in the end zone for a touchdown. The Brentwood scoring drive was a drive. Uh, it was a sustained drive, and it looked like they had something going. And I thought that was something that had the second half continued on, they would have been able to have some sex, success with. I don't know what Coach Crawford and his staff saw Friday night and Friday during the day, but they saw something. And you're right, man. The Brentwood Bruins came out on Saturday, and they played very well. Well, it's very un fortunate for either team. Neither team gets an edge, so to speak, because it's, you know, it's both teams get to, to prepare differently for that uh, second half on Saturday. But, you know, you go in, you want to play that game, you've got your crowd there, you want to get that in for sure, but it got to the point where it was 10 o'clock, 1030, even remotely, dis, you know, discussing getting back on the field. So you're looking at probably 11 o'clock start back time. So we decided to push it back to that Saturday night uh, at seven o'clock. You know, it become a, a, a situation where if you did take the field back, injuries could occur. I mean, you've got guys that are, are wet, going in there from sweat, whatnot, sitting around for two hours, three hours. You've been, you know, you've been there and done that. Right. And it's not good for anybody as far as injuries are concerned. But then you come back the next day, then you as your coach have to get your team back into a routine, get them back to the school, get them back on a bus, go back over there and try to try to capitalize on something. The environment, believe it or not, on the second night was, was huge. Again, everybody came back out. That's great. Didn't have the same feel, but you still had the people there. Uh, but Brentwood just absolutely came out, like you said, made the adjustments needed. Uh, Caden Dreyer, quarterback, you know, came on there. He's got our WCTV play of the week where he throws a touchdown pass to Parker Bullion. Check this out. We'll be right back. I think he's. I think he's about to run a little bit. Lay the wood to somebody. Nope, he chunks it out there. He's got a block. And he's still on his feet. Number two, Parker Bullion in the end zone. And we've got another Woo! flag down there. I think Ravenwood. They're gonna pick that up. Brentwood able to answer with two, with back-to-back touchdown passes to blow this one open. Think, think about this. Week one, the Bruins lost to Independence by one. And right now they are up on the defending state champions by, by 14. 14. So Tate, what do we see in that play of the week? Well, it's designed to be a quick throw and then get upfield, but that, that touchdown doesn't happen if it wasn't for the, the blocks by Christian Labresh and uh, Will Leone out there, 87 and 13. So great job by them. They did what they were supposed to do. Parker gets the ball, gets it upfield, touchdown. Good play, uh, but it took everybody doing their job. And if I'm not mistaken, Christian Labresh right now, Memphis commit, he is a good-looking good looking individual. Kid. I mean, you're talking 6'4", 6'5", good-sized kid. Can run. Can run. The touchdown pass against Independence was – I mean, he caught it on top of the guy's helmet. That was – he's an athlete, yes. So I think he'll get some more offers as well. And, uh, you know, my, this was my first physical view of watching the punting expertise of, of, of the punter. Tucker Day. Yes, Tucker Day, ranked number one in the country. It's obvious the hang time on his punts are 
you know, it, it's not necessarily about length all the time. It's as much as it hang time to cover those punts in the right. college game. And it is definitely, when it comes off his foot, it's a different looking ball. It was, he, he, he hit a couple. I did not get to see Saturday night. I did get to see Friday night. He hit a couple in that first half. Now, there's college guys that don't kick it that high. It was impressive. You're right. That's a heck of a weapon. I mean, you kick it that high, they're not going to return it. That's a great weapon. And, and again, I just, uh, the way Brentwood was running the ball, I felt like Brentwood had, a, had the running game going better than Ravenwood did. And I thought that was the, the biggest advantage they had. Centennial, one and one on the year versus Independence. Independence moves to two and zero. Oh, Seventeen in a row. Tate. Independence just keeps moving forward in that win column. They end up win, uh, beating Centennial thirty-one to twenty-one. You know, in this game right here, I actually got to catch that game. It was suspended in the second quarter, right before halftime on Friday night. So Saturday. Uh, I got to catch the, the Battle of the Woods and then move down and catch the very end of, of the Centennial Indy game. Uh, you know, this game was actually close. 31-21 uh, is not necessarily a blowout, but right. it was 31-14 at one point in time. And, uh, you know, this game was pretty close. And then Centennial turned the ball over twice while I was there on interceptions on probably ill-advised throws. I think Coach Kreisky will definitely address that. It's one of those situations where you're scrambling out of the pocket and, it's it, you know, it's five, six seconds into the play and all of a sudden you throw a, a Hail Mary down the field, you know, there's six people that are trying to make a play on it. Not very smart, but, you know, it's one of those things that you learn as you go on. You're playing, you know, uh, Landy Gidry back there. Obviously, Mississippi State commit. You probably don't want to try to test the right. waters on that. But, you know, there have been a lot of question marks. We talked about Scurry from, from Independence, sophomore UT commit. He's in week two of his, let's just call it his career, because he didn't get to play a whole lot last year, any meaningful downs. He gets in there, question marks are like, man, how does a kid as a sophomore that has not played – a down in high school, get a UT offer. Well, it was evident on Saturday night for me to get a little one-on-one -on -one coverage. The, the defense kind of pressed to try to get a little something going. He gets one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Hines threw a, threw a beautiful ball as a fade route to the corner of the end zone. They both go up to get it, and I think the, uh, the, the, the Centennial defender's hands may have gotten to his elbows. I mean, he was so high up. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, unbelievable athlete, wingspan, there's no telling what. Made it evident right then and there that he's an SEC football player. Yeah, and he's just a sophomore. So That's hard to believe. He ain't even matured yet, I mean. <laughs> right? Right. Big hands, you're right. He, he's, it's going to be tough uh, as he grows, as this year goes on. I, two things I took from that game is, is what, we, what we had talked about and what we thought. Remember, Independence is starting brand new with everybody on the offensive side in the skill position. And there were some things that uh, they did against Brentwood that were uncharacteristic of them. And I thought that was something, and I know you did too, that they would get fixed. They took a step forward in that. And, I mean, Gidry, he's already playing at full speed. He, he, he's an exciting guy. But at each week, Scurry's going to get better. T.J. Sheffield's going to get better. As you can see, they got the ball more. And so as he grows, that guy is going to be a deep threat, probably you know like none other in the mid state this year. Well, it will. It's it's the Nate Johnson effect. Same thing. You're going to see double coverages, which will alleviate something in the middle for Gidry. If not, if they put everybody out, it's going to open up you know the opportunity for for Henderson to run. Got my first uh, view of him in person as well. Uh, this is the uh, the kid that moved in from Louisville, Dupont High School. I'm telling you, he's special too. They, you know, they've got the pieces there. Yes. Now, the question has to remain, we got, we got spoiled. Let's just be honest. Last year you get spoiled. They're putting up points after points after points, rolling over people. These games are closer. So the question I've been asked and proposed many times is, is Independence not as good or are Brentwood Centennial a little better than what we're going to give credit for? I think we know the answer about the Brentwood. We knew coming in Brentwood was going to be better. Uh, I still think it's uh, out there yet right now to see how really, really good Independence is. Yeah, uh, well, I think they're young, and I think you, you're breaking in a new quarterback. Uh, Hines is a senior, but it doesn't matter. This is his first year to start and get, you know, the only way to find out how somebody's going to do in, in, in a live action is to put them out there, right? And, and he, thought, he does a lot of things really well, but this is his first year as the starter. So, and, and he's got all new cast, and, and, and Sheffield's young, and Scurry's young. And the thing about Gidry that's going to make them so hard as they keep going, you know, they put him in the slot so much, can't double-team him, you know. And so he – but you have to know where he is, and that's going to open those guys up on the outside even more. But I think 
Brentwood is better. We knew that was going to happen. And that was the other thing I took away from the game. I, I knew Coach Kreisky's teams were going to play hard. I knew he was going to work hard and his staff was going to work hard. But I did not know that they would play this well in these first two games. They're going to be good on defense. These are two, as we saw, Brentwood scored 45 points against Ravenwood and then was able to score 20 points against Independence. I think Centennial is going to have a really good defense this year. As they find an identity on offense, uh, I, think, I think the answer to your question is Independence is, just has to get sharper. But I think both those teams are better. I agree. You know, after watching Centennial, I think everybody wrote them off after the year they had last year, uh, losing the coaching staff, losing Tyrell Dotson, losing a lot of those kids, Pisacani, the Piscani boys. But what I saw the other night, you know, uh, looks really, really good. It's going to be interesting. When we come down to the wire, when we're looking at week 10, going into week 11 playoffs, week one of playoffs, and all the way through the playoffs, that semifinal round could it possibly be Independence versus a Brentwood or Centennial winner right yeah. there. And I really think uh, and feel confident at this point that obviously Henry County will be in the mix as well as that, but I really think that we're going to see Independence possibly versus Brentwood or Centennial. And what a game that will be with yeah. between Brentwood and Centennial to get into the semifinal game, then to get into the state championship game. After these first two weeks, that was one thing. I, I meant to check it. I, I, I'm not sure where it is. But I'm very excited about the Centennial Brentwood game. A lot of people have Henry County number one. I think it comes down to that game. Well, Coach Blade always tells me, look, hey, I don't care what the score is as long as we win by one. That's right. You know, like I said, we get, you know, we get so used to seeing those those points being scored. But here's one thing you would forget, the defensive side of the ball in Indy. Here's names that you do recognize, that you do know. Huner, Dupree, and Dempke all combined for 21 tackles last week. Huner had 10 and one interception. What a game he had. Yes. You know, Dupree right now, his name is being thrown around as a possibility of, of getting into that Mr. Football uh, category. I'd love to see that. Uh, you know, Gidry's also in there with two tackles. I mean, the defensive side, you're, you're failing to realize we, we, we don't talk about them a lot because we're so concerned with the offensive side. But those guys are playing well as well. Here's a stat that sticks out to me that Centennial needs to figure out. Chrisman, one catch, seven yards. Something's going on there. Either the defenses are keying in on him and trying to take him out of the uh, out of the game, or something else. I'd like to see. I would love to see Chrisman to get you know try to get sure. a better game under his I belt. Give a talent. Well, and then the other one uh, to on the other side, uh, Centurion Duro, nine total tackles from his secondary position, one tackle for a loss and one interception. He's playing great on defense, uh, not getting as many snaps on the offensive side, but it's because of how important he is on defense. That's, that's, a, that's a big game from the defensive secondary for him against Independence. Page versus Lipscomb Academy. This is one of those, I, I mean, this is a first time for me. Right. Seven to seven. The storm, Do we know what quarter? The storm comes in. I believe it was first quarter. Okay. Or maybe the start of the second. And uh, Lipscomb Academy apparently has had enough and wants to go home. Don't want to come back. They decided on a draw. It's a little nicer than what I probably would have been, saying, hey, we're going to be here at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, or we're going to take the win, either one. But uh, they decide on a draw, so both move on. They strike it from the record book. There's no such thing as a draw, so it act like it never happened. So Page remains at 0-1 going into this week's game against Spring Hill. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Summit. Now, this was a tough trip for Old Sparty. Old Sparty goes all the way up to Clarksville Northwest, two hours on a bus. They get in there. They start the third quarter. Boom, it hits. And that was not a favorable situation for them. They have to come all the way back home, turn around, and go back up on Saturday to Clarksville to play Northwest. And you know what? It was worth every minute of the trip because Old Sparty came back with a big-time 17-7 win. Yeah, I'm most impressed with this because Ravenwood and Brentwood, they have to come back and play. Ravenwood gets on a bus and they take a, what, 10-minute bus ride over to Brentwood maybe if they... It takes longer to get the bus to the school than it does right, to get over right. to Brentwood. <laughs> if they don't hit red lights, it's less than 10 minutes. And, and so Summit going back, and Clarksville Northwest is, one, is probably the hardest school in Montgomery County to get to. You know, you get to the interstate, and then, you know, it's over That's there right. by the P, your old stomping ground. But it's another 25 it's, minutes. It's actually at Acme Boot Hill towards <laughs> Fort Campbell, but, yes, Correct. you have to get In by. between. Right, okay. Right. Not easy to get to. No. 25 minutes off the interstate. So, I would think that if, if I was Coach Coleman, which I think – he was very proud of. I'd be very proud of the way the maturity that this team showed. That's not easy to do, man. That, that's that's a lot of time on the bus. Two nights in a row, you get up there, it happens again. But they went up, played well. And and if you have not seen Northwest, they're a very athletic team. 
396 yards rushing. That's pretty good. 193 from our man Ty Carter. I know I keep tooting his horn, but I think he's a big, big part of their success. Uh, he, he is, uh, uh, is going to be a stud, man. I really like the way he's playing. Okay, so I'm going to have to say something real quick. Ty Carter, that's 193 on the, yeah. on the season. Oh, on the season. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, right, that's right. That's right. Sorry. He had 54. I was looking at that earlier. I was like, I missed something. <laughs> Ty but, had uh, but, this is season. Dang it. But that's okay. Ty Carter sitting just a hair under 200 yards. Gotcha. It's a, almost a 100-yard average per game right now. He's going to have big games. I agree with you. We do say that a lot. Ty Carter is a difference maker for those guys. Tyler Palmer had 16 carries as well at 68 yards. Uh, Zakreski, obviously, at the quarterback, passing-wise, uh, had a few passes there, probably three. Uh, the way it looks here, three passes. Maybe had five on the night, two or in warm-ups. I always like to talk – to Coach Coleman about that. But yeah, it, that, that air show that we were talking <laughs> about preseason hadn't developed yet. It's coming. It's going to have to come. But anyway, winner, winner for Summit, 17-7. Yeah. You know, it was one of those games. Now, think about this. Summit, they needed to get that monkey off their back. Boom, they got it off. It was 3 to nothing at halftime. You're sitting there thinking, come on now. Old Sparty, we don't need another collapse. We don't need another second half, you know, not coming and showing up. And then it gets to 10-7. to That's when the game was actually uh, suspended. They came back 10-7, to but then – go on to win this game 17-7 to and hold them to zero points in the fourth quarter. So does that propel Summit to where they need to be for week three? You would think so. I mean, it was one of the ones that they think that the thought at the beginning of the season that they could and probably should win. So you had a heartbreaker last week to Spring Hill. You come back and have some, some tough circumstances hit you this week and you got the win. So, you know, I, I, they're back on track, I would, I would think, would be the answer to that. All right, Franklin – Franklin, one and one, moves to one and one after beating Riverdale at Riverdale, 27-20. I think a lot of people were not sure about this game, a bounce-back game for Coach Webb and his group after getting beat by Centennial. What a tough matchup that would have been, but it looks like to me they pretty much dominated that game. Yeah, they did, and the only negative that came out of it is, is closing the games out. Uh, they were up, I believe, 27-13 to 13 late, got the ball down to the one, they fumble. And Riverdale's able to come back, and they got another score, made it a little bit closer than they can. So, after, obviously, the Centennial game when they did not close out, and then this one, uh, the way that happened, even though it was a win, that was the only negative that came out of it. Coach Donnie Webb wants to see his team learn how to finish. And the schedule they play, they're going to have to learn how to finish. But it was what you would expect. They dominated the game on the line of scrimmage. They dominated the game rushing. Had three guys, Patterson, uh, uh, Rossi and another one that all averaged over four yards per carry. Hit Gacka on some long plays down on the play on the play action. So it's their recipe for success. They executed it, and the defense must have played well too because Riverdale is a very athletic team. Well, we keep hearing those same names. Mitch Rossi obviously is a, a center point around that. The G Alex Gacka there, he's going to be a, a a very good receiver as the year goes on. Uh, behind that enormous offensive line, if they stay healthy. I believe they still have an opportunity, just like we discussed. I know that we both picked them to go 10-0, and but I still think as it progresses, if they stay healthy, they continue getting better, they could be a force in 6A before this thing's over with. Oh, yeah, I think they are. And then also, you know, you look at things that you, you didn't do well week one that you got better week two, kicking game. And, and Christopher Hill uh, kicked a 37-yarder and a 43-yarder, I believe. We missed two field goals in game one, so came back and – you know, seven-point games, six of those points were field goals last week, so it was good to see that fixed because they're going to need that as the season goes on. Well, the WCS Sports Conference moved to 4-1, and one, and it, that's in non-conference play. Right. You know, I always love to look at that numbers when we play outside the conference, and the last win that we got was Fairview at Creekwood, and not only did they win, they won in big-time fashion, 38-13. That moves Fairview to 2-0. and oh. Who would have thought? Coach Chris Hughes and the Fairview Yellow Jackets will be sitting undefeated right now and going into week three. Two nice wins, man, very nice wins. And, and both of those wins are against teams they lost to last year. Uh, you're right. I, I did not guess it, but after watching them at Page, this team's got a swagger about them, a little bit of an attitude about them, and they're taking care of business. Nope. Th those are two impressive wins. It's Playing well. It was 31-13. Uh, Cameron Lusk went up, get a pick six to make it 38-13. The ball was rolling in. Yellow Jackets just completely roll. It's uh, it's fantastic. All these games being played, we're four and one in non-conference play. Like I said, moving into region play right now. The the rubber meets the road this coming up week. As you talk about, let's talk about Brentwood. Brentwood 
is hosting Rossview. Rossview 0-2. They lost last week 21-42 to Beach. We've talked about Beach before. Not sure how strong they are. This should be, a, for all intents and purposes, this should be a, a win for Brentwood. Yeah, this is a, g a game that if they come out and play well, they can get a win and they can keep continue to get better and they continue to work on some things. Getting those two – looks like they're going to play both quarterbacks all year long, get the running game going. Brentwood should have success with this, and I think they will. Uh, Centennial. Centennial goes to – excuse me, host Dixon County, who's 1-1. One one. Dixon, after getting beat by Creekwood the, the week before in their big cross-county rivalry, beat Columbia this past week 55-40. to 40. Dixon County does have a few weapons. Yes. Have the, the young man that's going to North Carolina, and they have a few other Division One prospects on that team. But I really think that Centennial also probably handles business in this game. Yeah, the, the, this, the, the pitfall of this game is you had two big games right in a row, Franklin and Independence, that you had to get up with. One was a, a great victory, and one was a heartbreaking loss. So you got to make sure that you don't, you don't let that slip up on you. But this is a game that they can win and will win if they play well defensively, and they've got to use this as a game to find some sort of identity on offense. Now, on paper, Dixon obviously losing to Creekwood, that, that, that would hurt their power rankings if there were such a thing. But all the coaches preseason talked about Dixon, Dixon. Got to be careful about Dixon. Right. Dixon's going to be better. Uh, Coach Randy Murphy over there is taking over. I think his son's quarterback. Yes. A lot of things that you need to, you know, there's a little bit of concern about Dixon, and that's something that, uh, like you said, you can't overlook Dixon about, you know, Dixon's been pretty much a stepchild in the Big Six since we've been playing, uh, since they've been in the region with these guys. But uh, this is a little concern there. Yeah, well, the things they do well is what Centennial does well, too. They can throw the ball well. Centennial obviously has a good defensive backfield. So uh, I, I think, like I said, if they play well defensively, they'll be okay. And this is a game where they can – uh, try to work on some things. They could not do it the last two weeks, obviously, because of who they were playing. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't start to see a little bit of Centurion Darrell on the offensive side. He's a heck of an athlete, heck of a player. He's just been so uh, on the pl on the field so many plays on defense the past two weeks. But this is a game where maybe we can work him in a little bit. Remember, the only touchdown uh, pass against Ravenwood last year in that big win. Independence at Lincoln County. Lincoln County is at 1-0. They beat Lawrence County 30 to nothing. Uh, you can throw that out the window because that means absolutely nothing <laughs> to most people, you know, in the big six. Right, but, right. you know, a win's a win. Independence, do they get denied their 18th win? No. It's pretty simple. You want right? a longer answer? Yeah, no, no, no. That's, that's, that's kind of what I was figuring, <laughs> too, uh, uh, as the Lincoln County, when they get into the meat of this region, Independence's region, uh, it, it's really not a whole lot of roadblocks. The way this game's played now, if you can't play in space, uh, you've got problems. And Lincoln County is not built to play in space, and obviously Independence is. Franklin travels to, to Overton. Overton sitting at 1-1, one one, lost to a very, very good Marshall County team, 19-33. to Here's the scary thing. Marshall County can beat a lot of 6A teams. So don't look at that and think Overton's not very good. Overton thumped Stewart's Creek a couple weeks ago. I'm not sure how good Stewart's Creek is, but they're very, very athletic. They got a quarterback in Theo Jackson who, if you give him a seam, he's gone. If they play discipline football, don't turn the ball over on offense. Franklin will be okay, but this is not an easy one. Page versus Spring Hill. This is a very tough game for Coach yes. Rasslund to come back after getting beat by Fairview, after the draw. Now you got to turn around and play a 2-0 and Spring Hill who beat McGavitt 47-15. Spring Hill's playing really well. Jammins is doing a very good job. Page has got their hands full this week. Fairview has to travel to Stewart County, who's 1-1 to beat Houston County 28-21. Uh, the Houston County game to me would not be an indicator of how very good they are. So I think Fairview right now is looking pretty good to get a road win. That's one of the worst road trips in America. It if really that is. doesn't to Dover. Oh, it's brutal. If that doesn't mess them up, Fairview will handle this game really again. I like this team. They got an attitude. Coach Rich, Richie Westman and the Raptors have to get back on the horse, have to go to Mount Juliet, who did it, uh, who's one and one, who got beat by Kane Ridge 47-42. Interesting matchup. This is not an easy game, bounce back game for the Raptors. Good thing for Ravenwood is Mount Juliet got beat so bad by Kane Ridge because they could not run with them. But they are huge. They're probably that's one to check out. That might be the one offensive line bigger than Franklin's. So if Ravenwood can stop the run, they'll be okay because they're going to score points on them, but they're going to have to stop the run. Big offensive line. Old Sparty goes to Shelbyville. Shelbyville right now has a great start, one of the best 5A program starts for them. 
2-0, and beat a good Giles County yes. team, 27-21. Old Sparty going to have to play well. Do they still pass the ball as much as they did in the past? Shelby used to be a pass-first team. Did, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're playing the way they are. They're breaking in a brand-new quarterback this year, too. So, not throwing it quite as much, but, yes, uh, they, they, they will have a dual-threat type quarterback offense. Nolensville, first ever game in the history at home for Nolensville versus South Gibson. South Gibson sitting at 2-0 and now. This is not going to be an easy road for them. <laughs> Beat O'Brien Central 47-42. This is going to be interesting. Game day will be there. What do you think? I know nothing about them, but O'Brien County, I mean, they're not – that's not an awful program. They scored 47 points against them. So, I, I, you know, we're going to find out. But I tell you what, dual threat quarterbacks. Nolensville's got one in the Wharton youngster. And, you know, fear the visor, man. And they, you don't they have anything to lose. That's right. Nothing to lose. Come on. Uh, you know, you got the greatest show on turf. <laughs> we're fixing to see what happens. We're going to see the Wharton kid in action. WCS game day is going to be a community event. It's going to be enormous. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, Coach Hester is promising they're going to turn out, so it's up to us to bring our A game. But, I, hey, it's going to be tough to top last week at Brentwood. That was a that was a great environment. All right, so we got a one minute wrap up here. I am leading eight to two. Excuse me, I, my record is eight and two. You are five and five right now. I got a lead, so let's do this rundown. Brentwood versus Rossville. Who do you have? Brentwood. Absolutely, Brentwood. I like the Vegas jerseys too. Good oh job, Coach man, Crawford. they look really good. Bruins roll on this one. Not even close. Centennial versus Dixon. The Cougars go to two and one. Oh, they're both Cougars. Yeah, the Centennial Cougars go to two and one. No, we said Creed. Thought you said Dixon. I'm <laughs> going with Centennial Creed. Indy at Lincoln County. Independence running clock. I was just you beat me to it. It's going to be the first running clock of the season for those guys. Franklin at Overton. Close, but Franklin. Franklin as well. Page versus Spring Hill. I hate to do it, Bones, my man, but I think Spring Hill is going to be one of the surprise teams. Spring Hill. Pump the brakes on that. Patriots are going to come in there. The draw gave them something. We're going to look at it positive. The draw gave them something. It was not a loss. <laughs> Spring Hills do a loss. Page gets the win on that. Fairview at Stewart County. Fairview. Fairview all the way. I agree with you 100%. Ravenwood at Mount Juliet. Tough bounce back game for Coach Westman. Who do you have? I'm going to go with Mount Juliet. Man, come on. G2 Bar Raptors get back on the horse there. They can't run with them. Summit at Shelbyville. Live by the sword. Nolensville Knights. United. Okay, oh. Nolensville versus South Gibson. He takes Nolensville. I agree with you. I said Summit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. okay. I'm going to go with you. Nolensville Summit at Shelbyville. Last game? I still think Summit's going to make the playoffs, but I'm going with Shelbyville. Oh, come on, old Sparty. Keep me in the lead. This has been WCS Sports Connection. We'll see you next week. Rain Again by Gail Bunton Haddock. It's green again now that the rain has come back. I've been out in it. My feet are wet and getting cold, but no matter. The land was parched, the leaves brittle dry with fire and ever-present threat. With the rain has come a hush. It has settled on the far hills and across the fields. We were ready for the relief of this rain. Sometimes slow and soft, sometimes hard and slanting on a rush of wind, and then a quietness that heals the brutality of a too long drought. Mm -hmm. 